after two days of trying to get this working, I finally got it working. To make it happen, I had to remove the USB chip because that FE 1.1 thing is just a piece of garbage. And I figured out that if I have this thing doing anything with USB, it wouldn't work. Nothing would work. Uh, but if I made it stop doing any, you know, just made it blink or whatever, flash the blink program, uh, suddenly the USB hub would work and I could actually use this port and those two ports uh, just fine. I plugged my YubiKey in and it was able to work. So something about this chip being USB 2.0 trying to talk to the um, hub just was not working out. Uh, so, hold on a second. Just bring up terminal so I can test stuff. All right. So I've got it actually working. I actually just finished mapping out all these uh, Hall Effect sensors through the, you know, to each port that they're on, on the um, analog multiplexers. Uh, everything works, and I'm just going to demonstrate that. And, and you can see my risky keyboard here shows up. I'm, I'm just going to take uh, this little magnet, which is in a stem, and let's do A. A. Let's just pick one over here. Uh, o. Oh, <laughs> comma. We'll just hold that. We'll have a key repeat for a little while here. Look at all those commas. <laughs> and now we'll do an enter. Uh, enter. Look at that. So it definitely works. Now I just got to uh, put it all together and may maybe apply some hot glue here because that's a little fragile. <laughs> but man, it was a lot of trouble to try and get this thing working. Thanks to that FE1.1S chip. Now, the FE 1.1 chip is supposedly fine. It's the 1.1S that seems to have a lot of trouble. Uh, so I'm very disappointed that I chose that because now I'm going to have to choose a completely different chip, which is going to need all different schematic. Annoying. But you know what? Maybe this time I'll go with, I'll actually do with something premium since I know it works. I'm also having another problem with this board in that I can't use RTT, uh, a probe RTT, basically. I can flash this chip with. Uh, DFU, you know, over USB, which is, you know, that's the way users are going to do it. And I can flash it with ST-Link utility, but only in 8-bit mode. Because it says it's, like, low voltage for unknown reasons. But it's not running it. I mean, I measured all the 3.3-volt input pins. They're all fine. So I'm not sure what's going on there. If anyone has any suggestions as to what could be causing that, I'm all ears. I have no idea. Um... But I am able to flash it just fine. It's just annoying because I can't use my deb my usual debug methods. I'm going to have to set up a serial port to send messages over in the firmware, which is probably something I should be doing anyway. So it's not it's not a huge deal. It's just it's annoying that I might, can't use my um, ST-Link to its full potential. But yeah, that's my latest update. The Risky Board PCB is working. And now I have another one where I'm going to have to desolder this chip and do this same exact... Um, thing too but at least on that one i don't have these two usb ports <laughs> man i've already i've already soldered this in oh my gosh let me show you i had a hell of a time soldering that you can see it's a giant mess right there um, but on the other board I, i've learned my lesson and that one is actually really really nice and clean uh, and i also need to um test out oh, oh one thing that i know does work my little power selector here works fine Right off the bat, it can swap between these two power supplies and take power here from here. Just dandy. There's no trouble at all with that. It doesn't it doesn't fry the board, which is my biggest worry. <laughs> I was worried that I was going to plug this in and there was going to be some magic blue smoke over here, uh, but there wasn't. So that works fine. The uh, RGB LED output works, though I haven't actually programmed anything to make these blink or anything like that. But I do know they're working because every now and again, when I plug it in, one of them, a random one, just turns on for green for a second, which is pretty normal for WS2812s. Uh, and these are the 2812B-Bs, which use up the same amount of current as the minis. So it should be just 12 milliamps per. And if you're just powered by a regular USB, it's going to be like half brightness, maybe a third brightness. And that should solve any sort of um, current problem. And I did measure the current initially, but that was when I was having all these problems. And it was at basically 500 milliamps, which is the max USB supplies. But I'm guessing it'll use a lot less than that now that I've removed this problematic chip. We'll see. A lot of, work, a lot of stuff to do. And now that I've actually programmed it, I actually need to put it together. I actually printed out all the switches and assembled them. Those are all ready to go. What I don't have, believe it or not, is keycaps. Uh, but I'll just raid my pile and try and find some appropriately sized ones. Um, so it'll, it'll be pretty ugly, but at least I'll get to play with it, right? I'll be able to type on it.